Violet Evergarden. The movie finally released on DVD and man oh man, I am excited to make this video. What's good guys? It's your chicken. We're gonna be talking about one of the best protagonists in anime. Although not the flashiest, Violet Evergarden stands to be one of the most unique characters that we've seen today in anime. So, there's gonna be spoilers. So watch the anime and movie first. And most importantly, remember to support the series. And as always guys, like the video and subscribe if you're new because it really helps and I appreciate every single one of you that do so. And if you do like the video, share it to someone who you think will enjoy it as well. And tell me what your thoughts are on the anime and the video as a whole down in the comments. Also, watch the whole thing guys. <laughs> Trust me, you will not regret it. So grab a snack and enjoy the video. Alrighty then. Without further ado, let's get into the details of why Violet Evergarden is one of the best protagonists in anime. Y'all already know how I'm gonna start with her design. Her overall design just screams loyalty and classiness. With the deep blue dress, the emerald green pendant, blonde hair, and sky blue eyes. All of which make her seem like she's perfect and a guy, <laughs> and in many ways, like a doll at least what we see in her first impressions. But later on, we find out that she's a human weapon, or used to be, a quote-unquote tool without a mind of her own. To add to this, she has metal arms, bro, immediately reinforcing the doll aspect of her with the artificial body parts and all. And I'ma just say this now to get it out of the way, but the damn soundtrack and animation, dude. Kill Annie, I swear to God. The first thing Violet does in the anime is ask where Gilbert is. And with this, we can already tell that this character is insanely important to her. People even call her his dog, bro. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Guess she was his bitch. Anyways, whether it be a father figure or something else, the anime hints that he passed away in the war in which lasted for four years, ending in their victory. She even calls herself Gilbert's tool and that she should be thrown away if she no longer has any use. This really gives us a feel of what kind of mentality she has in the beginning, having no sense of individuality or self-worth. Again, like she was a literal doll or a weapon, not taking breaks, not feeling tired, only acting on orders, living like a soldier. War was all she knew. Before we get into what happens after she wakes up from the end of the war, let's get into why she's like this in the first place. Something so damn crazy that it would literally make anyone like her. Why she's such a cold and heartless person. Why she's called a tool. So, let's talk about her past. Violet was immediately abandoned by her parents, not even being given a name at birth. She's an orphan, and with the war going on, it didn't exactly make her childhood the best. Violet was found in the enemy territory by Gilbert's brother, 
and she was treated very poorly by him. So poorly that he offers her as a weapon to his little brother, and which he immediately agreed to when he saw her being treated like trash. Gilbert begins taking care of her, as if he were her father, and the connection was almost immediately established. Gilbert begins teaching Violet how to read and speak, and most importantly, write eventually having to write daily reports for Gilbert. He later on gave Violet her name as he looked at an actual Violet alone besides a tree, telling her, don't be a tool, become someone that matches with their name. Despite this, everyone else treated her as a weapon, as a tool for killing, not as a human being. Unfortunately, we see how she actually reflects these thoughts, and it's very evident that war is all she knows. We can see how Gilbert is disgusted and sad by this, in the way that an innocent child like her has lived the life she has to become the way she is. Who wouldn't, man? It's really sad to see. He blames himself for why she's like this. More on this in a bit. As time goes on, Gilbert wishes to give her something for Thanksgiving, and he points out that the peace that she's witnessing is because of her actions. And of course, she chose the brooch because it resembled his hot eyes, <laughs> in which she describes as beautiful on the day they met. And just a little side note, Gilbert shows a lot of emotion towards Violet's situation, wanting her to have the normal life that she deserves. Then, we get into the final battle of the war, where Hudgens, a general and a friend of Gilbert, offered Violet a place in his new company when the war is over. Hearing this, Gilbert wants Violet to do this, even making it an order. We get into the battle, and holy shit, dude, Violet is a monster. She's very emotional when it comes to Gilbert, as seen when he got shot and in their goodbye. But with anything else that's not Gilbert, She's stone cold. And they didn't censor anything when she lost her arms, bro. Anyways, they successfully won the war, but with a price. Gilbert died right in front of Violet, telling her to live free. And most importantly, these words. I love you. What does that mean? What are emotions? Why do I feel this way? All of these questions and more get answered as the war ends. With the introduction of Hojin's new postal company, a new seed gets planted within Violet. Something that makes this version of her seem like a complete opposite of who she becomes. So, let's talk about the auto memory dolls. <laughs> Violet gets introduced to the memory dolls through a man who wanted to express his love to his childhood friend, wanting to know how the doll understood what this man's I love you meant to him. She then decides to become one to understand and learn what I love you means. Her every move is motivated by Gilbert's existence, and I'll get how this affects her in just a bit. Violet learns very quickly, on top of being a very hard worker, learning how to use a typewriter with artificial arms in literally a few days. <coughs> Damn, bitch! Her writing reflected her cold personality immediately when she worked on her first request, not sugarcoating anything. But her ara ara onesan tells her <laughs> tells her that humans are very contradictory with what they say testing others to reaffirm our worth. She tries very hard to understand human emotions, and because of this, Violet goes to a strict training camp. In this camp, we see how much Violet struggles with emotions, despite her getting perfect grades on everything technical. Even though being a doll relies on feeling and emotions, especially abstract ones, Violet did not give up. Shows how much she admires Gilbert, on top of sending him a few letters already. She didn't graduate from the camp, but she became aware of how to express someone's true feelings on paper. Her friend Luculia began telling her about her relationship with her brother, an ex-military, and how he blames himself for the death of their parents. She just wanted to tell him, thank you for being alive. Because of that, Violet decides to write a letter to his brother, one that worked. And despite being very short and simple, she was able to get a taste of how it's done. 
she was able to graduate because of this. And boys, here comes the first batch of feels. So buckle up guys, cause now we're getting into the good stuff. Violet's learning process is handled excellently, learning through others' experiences in their overall life. How subtly she changes is done beautifully, man. Her significant clients had a huge role when it came to Violet's development. Her first one coming out of nowhere, being her colleague Iris. Violet came to help her because she had an injury. She successfully expressed the emotions that Iris wanted to transmit to her parents. <clears throat> even though that wasn't the intention. This letter ended up much longer than the last, already showing us that she's been expanding on what she learned previously. Now, something that a lot of people missed is the connection the clients have with Violet's life. And in Iris's case, it's how they got their name. Flowers, especially flower language, is an incredibly important element throughout the whole series. I'll get into this more in a bit. She got her name because she was born when irises were on full bloom. And this aspect reflects how Gilbert gave Violet her name by seeing Violet. This is only scratching the surface when it comes to flower language. And it's genius that it is an important element. I mean, the anime is called Violet Ever Garden? Come on, man. Anyways, after this letter, Violet had her real first client, which was a princess. She had to write a public love letter to marry a prince of another country. So she can't f*** up. But just the mere fact that she was chosen says a lot about how she's gotten better at writing, being able to slowly understand emotions step by step. She used to get flamed, but now she's even getting praised by the princess's maid. And here we get to know Violet's age, which is 14. Excuse me, what? What is up with 14 year olds in anime? I mean, look at fucking Garfield, bro. For real though, our 14 year old girl is able to identify certain emotions at this point, mainly frustration from the princess. And because of this, Violet has started to understand what abstract feelings are. How the princess didn't want to send pretty sounding letters, but genuine ones. Gilbert barely makes an appearance on the anime, but his presence throughout all of the clients is undeniable, always being mentioned by Violet whenever she has a reason to. To get to the point, Violet was able to transmit what the princess wanted to tell the prince, which was her honest feelings about him. They got married and we see Violet smile for the first time, subtly telling us how her cold heart has begun warming up. And the flower language? Violet holds a white camellia and a rose, both of which represent each country and the prince and the princess. Both of these flowers appear during several scenes. To get to the point, this is an incredible way of visual storytelling especially because the white camellia symbolizes admiration. And this entire experience reflects a very prominent theme in Violet's character, admiration. Her unconditional love for Gilbert could be seen in the admiration the princess had for the prince. Okay, I'm done with flowers. <laughs> Moving on, the smile that naturally happened on Violet's face wasn't on purpose. I mean, <laughs> look at her trying to smile, bro. Her next job took place in an observatory. And once again, these jobs have a time skit that is seamlessly done. For example, Violet can take her gloves off with her hands now versus back then when she had to use her mouth. And how she's stopping acting like a soldier and keeping up with the fast pace the transcriber talks at. But this job gave Violet something very important, appreciation and relatability. Because of Leon, she has begun to truly understand how important a doll is, how special letters are to people around the world. She even questions if she's worth of such a position. Not only that, but she found someone she could relate to in some way, someone who shared a lot of her traits, both being orphans and emotionless as their colleagues suggest. This gave Violet the confirmation that she's not the only one who's the way she is, in a way calming the thoughts of her being a monster or a tool. Violet also discovers what loneliness is, 
telling Leon that it's what she's been feeling ever since Gilbert left her, calling his existence her world. Even after all this time, Violet still depends on Gilbert in a ridiculous way, something that will eventually hurt her in a way she would have never expected. I must live with my sin now for the rest of my life. Her next client, an author, wrote this. And y'all already know that this is exactly what Violet feels or will feel. This author and Violet once again have a connection. They both got their most precious things taken away from them. The author losing his wife and daughter. And Violet? Pfft, obviously her hand. Because of him, Violet begins to see how precious life is. How the lives of people are all important in the lives of others. It's because of this realization that she began to regret and understand the amount of lives she's taken, how many precious relationships she's destroyed. The way she feels for Gilbert was seen through the author. This opened her eyes to how everyone has their own Gilbert. Later on, Violet recreated the scene that the author wanted his daughter to do one day, which was to jump over the lake with her parasol. And because of this, she began to realize how many one days she's taken away from so many people, recalling what Hojins told her and being able to understand it now. She's burning up because of her sins. For the first time, we see her show a lot of emotion breaking down in tears. This epiphany in many ways melted her cold heart. The amount of emotion she showed in this scene is incredible, man. Compare this version to her in episode 1 and they're literally different people. Regret. Guilt. She finally began to understand these complex feelings. And to make things worse, after being lied to for so long, she found out that Gilbert was dead. <sighs> Violet's awakening began with her realization of Gilbert's death, asking everyone she knows and searching to confirm this. But all of this comes to an end once she goes to his house and sees his grave. She cried and man, when I tell you she cried, she cried like a bitch. Gotta kiss she's Gilbert's dog. <clears throat> Anyways, a common thing that many say is that if you cry a lot, it means that your soul is alive. Back then, Violet had the most poker of poker faces, but now she's starting to feel so many different emotions that she doesn't even know what to do with herself. Her soul has begun waking up. She began to feel the burning emotions she was immune to in the past. Her sins are daunting her to the point where she dreams about it. The guilt has begun sinking deep inside her soul, coming from the person she admires the most. The scene where she's alone in her room is a f***ing masterpiece, dude. If I could describe the whole scene in one word, it would be realistic. The way she begins doing things out of frustration, breaking things, picking up her dog plush to throw it, seeing her past self within it because of how it reminds her of being Gilbert's dog, but then just setting it down gently, only to begin choking herself right after, trying to end the amount of pain and guilt that she's feeling. It's a whole roller coaster of emotions filled with ups and downs, and the anime could not have visualized this any better. There are many moments where we as humans can go back to a place of darkness because of a given situation. We only feel what we do in the heat of the moment, forgetting the things that we have in the present and living in our past. I say all of this because I've been there, man, and it's so accurate, it honestly creeps me out. Seriously. Good job, Mr. Director. This whole experience and awakening is what transforms her into a true human being, someone who's truly alive. As she was going through all of this, she receives a letter from her colleagues, and like I mentioned about forgetting the present, this letter was the reminder of the life she's built without Gilbert. This letter reaffirms how important her position as a doll is. Receiving her first letter, she learns how special they are to receive, deepening her relationship with her present. Right after, 
we see her going through town and seeing how her clients have been doing through the use of newspapers, posters, etc. Visually summarizing all of her major jobs, constantly reminding her that she's not the same person she was in the war. She then ends up in a flower shop in which she encounters a violet. A white doe flies by, and as I've mentioned before in my other videos, they symbolize new beginnings. She looks down on the violet as the scenes go back and forth with her first encounter with Gilbert. But instead of Gilbert to her, it's her to a violet or her past self. Finally saying, a name that is suitable. As she turns to the right and takes a step towards the future, her first step into a new beginning, leaving the violets or her past self behind. Getting the courage to become someone different than just Gilbert's tool. Living for herself instead of for someone else. By the way, all of this was mostly silence and pure visual storytelling. Visual storytelling is underrated. Right after, she rushes back to the company and sees Hodgins, telling him that he was right, asking him a very daunting question. After all the sins she's committed, does she have the right to live? The past can't be erased, and we have to face it no matter what we've done. That being said, he goes on to tell Violet that her accomplishments will never be forgotten either. The same thing applies to all of us. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that the past does not define who we are and who we will be. Our present selves do. Never forget that, guys. Violet's change in mindset can be seen in the remaining episodes, mostly when she encounters Gilbert's brother, the one who treated her like trash in the war. Besides being more emotional overall to the point where she holds her tears back, acting more human, and just in general living for herself, the most concrete indication of her change is through her interactions with Gilbert's brother. She faces her past through a job that took place in enemy territory, dealing with rebels of peace. We can see how much guilt she feels when she sees injured soldiers over there, sighing from the anxiety from the guilt as she holds her brooch. Anyways, fast forward to after the war is truly over, we see how Gilbert's brother still views Violet as a tool until she proved her wrong many times, refusing to kill refusing to let him get away with the things he tells her, Violet is determined to become an actual human being. She also visits Gilbert's mother, and she tells her that it isn't her fault that he's gone. It's not because she failed to protect him and that she shouldn't carry this burden alone. Gilbert's brother finally accepts that Violet is a different person and has begun to look at her in a new light telling her that she should live in honor of Gilbert. To which she responds, I don't take orders anymore. Good right, you Anyways, just as Violet was beginning to accept Gilbert's death, just as she was ready to completely look towards a new future, a little piece of paper says otherwise. So without further ado, let's talk about the movie, the climax of Violet Evergarden. This is the only time I'll say this. The direction of this movie is seriously on another level. How they aren't afraid of letting the visuals speak for itself. Something I can make an entire video about, but okay then. With Violet's final letter in the anime, she writes that she finally learned what I love you means. And this is something that is present throughout the entire movie. The first thing we see is how famous she's become, writing the hymn of the sea, which is presumably an insanely important thing. Plus, it's the Thanksgiving festival, the festival where Violet got her brooch, as well as the very first scene of the anime. I'm talking about Yuri's since you already know, like all of the other ones, this shit is sad as fuck. But I will talk about the connection he has with Violet. Like many other jobs, it's related to her and Gilbert. In this case, 
It's being honest with your feelings. And I would say that this is the major theme in this movie, since it's present throughout the entire film. I'll get into this in just a bit. She even tells Yuri's, sometimes you have to tell your true feelings or they'll never know. And she's obviously referring to Gilbert here regretting not being able to understand the feelings she had for him. And then, if it wasn't obvious enough, we see that Gilbert didn't actually die. Why? And is now living on a small island with some villagers. Gilbert gets informed of Violet's survival by the hymn of the sea that she wrote because one of the villagers told him that the famous doll Violet Evergarden, Carter? Violet Evergarden wrote it. He was obviously shocked. Learning that not only is she alive, but she's doing very well without him. My man stood there for a good 30 seconds. Gilbert is a teacher in this island, and because he sent a letter for one of his students, he gets exposed because of his handwriting. Violet gets informed by Hojins about this letter, and holy crap, this sh just hits you right in the heart. This information came out of nowhere. And Violet begins to question herself if she's even ready to face him because of how different she is. Will I be able to articulate my feelings? <clears throat> Please keep this in mind. More on this in just a bit. Violet and Hojins arrive on the island shortly after, and he tells her to wait to confirm Gilbert's state. I'd like to point out how Violet keeps holding back her feelings with the girl on episode 10, the boy in the hospital, and now the island. Keep this in mind. Right after Hojins left, some kids came up to her and began talking about their teacher, and this is the moment Violet learned that Gilbert is alive. <laughs> Oh god, not again! The way she slowly realizes how it was brought up by a dead mantis without an arm and how she just couldn't believe it. That damn smile! It also makes sense that Gilbert became a teacher for kids, you know, with him teaching Violet the things she knows when she was little and all. Anyways, Gilbert meets Hudgens, and in a nutshell, he doesn't want to see Violet at all, mostly because he feels guilty about how she is. By the way, Hudgens is underrated as fuck. This dude is best boy. Okay, moving on. Gilbert tells Hudgens that she's better off without him. Remember what I mentioned about being honest with yourself? Gilbert is a super selfless person. I mean, we literally see him do all sort of selfless things from the very beginning with Violet, and now paying the sins his country bears on the island by himself. He feels insanely guilty and lives full of regrets, even though it's not really his fault for the circumstances Violet ended up in. This mindset is very common for someone like Gilbert. I can relate to him on a lot of ways because of this. And this was before I found out that we had the same personality type. Obviously, Violet can't believe this and goes to search Gilbert for herself. When she does find him, Gilbert pushes her away. To re-emphasize, it's obvious that this isn't what Gilbert wants. He's being selfless. We see him teary-eyed whenever Hojins or Violet talked, but neither of them ever saw his face. Gilbert thinks that he's doing what's best for them, but he really isn't. He isn't being honest with what he feels, but that's the thing. He thinks he doesn't deserve to see Violet, so he punishes himself the way he does. Even though Violet is clearly heartbroken by this, She's ready to accept it, telling Hojins that she's going back to Leiden to continue writing letters after getting another reminder of how important her line of work is. I mean, bro, if someone says that hearing your voice is enough for them, come on, man. I wanted to punch the f out of this dude. This all makes sense with all that I said about Violet moving on from her past and living the way she wants to live. It isn't crazy to think that she would move on from Gilbert if it were truly necessary. Now, what I'm about to say is kind of far-fetched, but Gilbert finishing his new machine and delivering the grapes to the other side can be parallel to how he sees Violet, letting her go to live free. But Violet delivers her final letter to Gilbert through this machine almost in a way that the grapes reject his way of thinking that they should be separated. The old man tells Gilbert what I mentioned earlier, that he tries to carry all of the burdens himself, not letting himself go to the home he has in another place, which is what he wants. Gilbert's brother goes to see him, telling him that he'd apologize but would rather drag him to see Violet. We see Gilbert feeling insane amounts of guilt, 
bringing himself to tears as he thinks about the childhood he wanted to give Violet. But what he doesn't realize is what he was able to give Violet, despite thinking he completely failed her. The final letter, after so many letters that Violet wrote to Gilbert, since the very first episode finally got to him. Her growth, experiences, relationships, all of these things evolved in the years that they were separated, and yet she never forgot about Gilbert. She tells Gilbert what he needed to hear, that it's because of him that she was able to accomplish all of these things. He taught her how to write, read, and most importantly, how to love. In a life full of killing and war, Gilbert was the only source of love that Violet had. This letter was the slap in the face that Gilbert needed, finally realizing that he was being clouded by his negative thoughts about Violet, getting the affirmation that he isn't the bad guy he thought he was. Gilbert finally starts being honest with himself and rushes to see Violet. And y'all already know that this scene made me cry like a bitch. Violet and Gilbert both rush towards each other, beginning to finally be honest with themselves. Violet wanting to stay until she saw Gilbert, and Gilbert with wanting to be by Violet's side. After so many years, they finally meet face to face. And Violet's face just says it all. She can't believe it. Something that she wished and wished for every day even though it was impossible in a way, came true. All of the emotions she's been holding back began coming at her like a huge storm. She used to be a soulless weapon, unable to understand what feelings are. And now she's dwelled up in so many of them that she can't even speak. This alone shows Gilbert how much she's grown and how she's become a full-fledged human being now which is what he always wanted for her. She repeats the phrase, I, over and over again, only to be drowned by her tears right after, to the point where she even hits herself, being frustrated and trying to force out what she wanted to say to him, the words that drove her into becoming a doll, the words that kept her going day after day, having a reason to wake up in the morning, the words she finally learned after years of learning what human emotions truly are. I love you. What an incredible scene, man. And to end off the video, I'm gonna talk about a few symbolisms that I missed. Flower language. It's literally all over the anime and the movie. Seriously, if you rewatch this and become aware of it, you'll start to see how great it is. And just flowers in general, with the various characters having flower names. Daisy being the new character in the movie. And how daisies can mean I love you truly when given to someone. The whole theme of the climax. And all of this isn't done in a cringy, in your face way. You really have to be looking out for these things to be aware of it. And in the end, fireworks. Also consider flower language. I mean, fireworks in Japanese is hanabi, which means flower fire. Don't worry, I'll talk about flowers in a future silent video if you know what I mean. She ended up staying in the island with Gilbert and kept being a doll, earning herself her own postcard in the future with how popular she became, as well as adapting the thumbs up she learned from Yuri's. And I fucking lost it here. And finally, Kyoani is not afraid of using long amounts of silence. It works so damn well with letting the viewer truly feel what the visuals and music are trying to emit. To support this, the climax is the very culmination of everything that a story builds up from the very beginning. The relationship between Violet and Gilbert, the unconditional admiration even though he wasn't with her throughout most of the anime, all of it peaked in that final scene on the ocean. You feel how much she struggled. After seeing her try so hard and fall so many times from being a complete emotionless mess, to see her finally get what she wanted, something that she was searching for the last few years, it could not have been done any better, man. The viewer grows with Violet, 
And what makes a great protagonist is how the viewer can relate and develop with them as the story progresses. In a way, seeing themselves in the protagonist, growing and accomplishing many things. Especially Violet. Again, she was a mess. And look at how much she's developed. If you like this anime at least a tiny bit, there's no way you didn't cry to this scene. But unfortunately, Violet's situation is not common in real life. A reminder to always tell the people you love the things you want to tell them when you can. Because you'll never know when they're gone, man. Seriously, do not live with what ifs and regret, guys. Tell your parents you love them and answer their damn calls. <laughs> Tell your friends that you love them. Tell that special someone you love them. If you like someone, tell them, man. Express your feelings to other people and let your soul live. Because I'm telling you that it'll hit you harder if you don't. And I think that this anime can visualize that aspect of life pretty well. Be honest with yourselves. What's the worst that can happen, right? I love Violet Evergarden, man. <laughs> I really hope that the love that I have for this anime shows in this video because seriously, if you've watched my top 10 video, it wasn't even on my top 10 before, but now it's on my top five. Rewatching this entire anime and just making this video has just been an insane experience that I will honestly just remember for the rest of my life, man. Once again, if you guys haven't liked the video, please give it a like and comment down below what you think because it actually really, really helps. And I would love to see what you guys thought about the entire video because I'm really proud of it. By the way, <laughs> The thumbnail is totally not inspired by that Goku poster over there. <laughs> Making this video was not healthy for my heart, man. Seriously, the amount of times that I cried or teared up is not healthy. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever cry to anything to this degree ever again with anything, man. Maybe with this video, you guys can understand just a little bit of the amount of love that I have for Kyoto Animation. Seriously. We don't deserve them, man. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really, really hope you enjoyed the video. So as always, guys, don't do dumb shit. See you in the next one and stay cringy.